Hub Culture Pavilion with Michael Nash, who is the producer and director of a film called Climate Refugees, um, which screened last night at COP15. Um, so we've been talking to a lot of scientists, um, but now we're going to get the filmmaker's perspective. Um, welcome to the Hub Pavilion. Thank you. Um, Michael, have you, had a, have you accomplished what you'd hoped to here at COP15? Um, I think so. You know, really our goal to come here was to, um, you know, get some of the politicians that the policymakers actually screen the film and um, I think we've done that. Okay. Um, they had a big screening last night and there were quite a few in attendance. Can you tell us about some of the speakers that you had afterward and what they were talking about? Yeah, we had a great panel afterwards. Um, we had Coco Warner, who is um, really in charge of migration for the United Nations University. Uh, we have Bill McGibbons, who it's a wonderful um, scientist out of America who pretty much, you know, is behind 350.org. Um, Hans Schnellenover, I hope I pronounced that correctly, who, you know, is the director of PIC um, in Germany. And we had a couple people from the CARE organization. What was the inspiration behind making this film? Sometimes things just land in your lap. And... Um, you know, and I realized that the human face of climate change had never really been documented. Um, I just felt a very strong need to really go out there and see what it looked like. And I'd heard that there were more environmental refugees in the world than actually political refugees. And that was a statement by the United Nations University, which I found to be very hard to believe. And I just kind of, when I started researching and found this whole kind of um, you know, this collision taking place where overpopulation, overconsumption, lack of resources, and a changing climate are now colliding for the first time in civilization. Um, I thought it was the basis for a really, you know, interesting documentary. What message is your film trying to say? What can the average person do to help right now in terms of the... Well, I think the film says a couple things. Um, First of all, for those that really think, that believe in climate change and believe it's 50 to 100 years away and it's polar bears in Greenland, um, that is true. But the fact is, it's affecting human beings right now. Um, there's 25 million people that are, you know, migrating because they can no longer survive on the land that they once lived on. Um, so I think the film really kind of illuminates that, you know, climate change is here and now. And it's, and it's not going away. Um, the other thing that people really need to, that I hope they take out of the film is, um, we basically need to get, at least in America, um, we need to get politically involved. You know, we need to hold the politicians accountable for creating a more sustainable life for us all to live in. And so I hope the film kind of comes across that way. Um, and your film is obviously sort of directed at America. What are your plans for the film in the States? Well, we world premiere in Sundance. Um, and Sundance has given us an 8.30 Saturday night slot in the library, which it really just does not get any better than that. We're very excited about that. And, you know, hopefully we'll find a distribution deal that will, you know, get this film into theaters and, um, and you know, we can start shedding light on this subject matter and, you know, and, and America can you know, kind of move on as business as usual and, and, you know, really start affecting change. Well, be sure to check out Climate Refugees, which is opening next year all around the world. Um, thank you, Michael Nash, for thank coming you. down. Um, and I'm Meg Thompson at The Hub.